Hi, I'm JT from Hawthorne Heights, and you are on Infectious Magazine. This is Angela with Infectious Magazine here with Hawthorne Heights. How are you? I'm very dandy. How are you? Very good. Uh, no, we interviewed you last year, um, or the band last year, and we talked about VFWs and how the scenes have changed. Um, and it had been mentioned that there was this awesome venue in Kentucky where you shot Four White Walls. Do you think that it's those beaten, you know, off the beaten path places rather than the big cities, which are thought to be hubs that are sort of the the culture where you know art is growing? I fully agree with that. I actually grew up in a tiny town in West Virginia where I was the one renting the rental hall to play shows. It's uh, not only is it an untapped resource, it's an untapped source of energy for these kids to be able to hear a band and feel something instead of just listening to like modern radio and going to Walmart and buying see whatever CDs they have there. You can bring this music that uh, people really care about and it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, you're playing to these kids that don't ever get any shows and it's, uh, the energy there is just completely raw. It's amazing. Yeah, I agree. I, try, I put together a few local shows at VFWs and it's so sad because it's like, it's some of the best bands and it's just some of the, like, the hardest to turn out those shows. Yeah. It's because you don't have anything like you don't have booze that you're selling. You yeah. know, like it's, it's really just about the music. Yeah. That's all you can do there is just watch bands. And unfortunately, sometimes that's enough, even though that's exactly what should be the most thing that's important. Yeah. Even just getting people to pay attention. Is so yeah. Awesome. Cell phones. You can blame cell phones for that. Exactly. When I was doing this, there were no cell phones. See? So you got a head start. Yeah. You guys have also talked about EPs being thought of as a couple of songs to basically hold fans over, which I thought was really interesting because I'd never thought about it that way, but I think it's an interesting perspective. Um, so do you think that that constant demand for new music or videos or announcements has sort of stumped the creative process, or do you think that pressure can be good for the creativity? I think it can be both. Sometimes if you give people too much, they get too much and it turns them off, then they're like, well, I'll find something new. But it's such, there's so fast of a turnover because of stuff like the internet. You can find anything you want exactly when you want it and move on so quickly uh, that you don't have to sit there and digest and fall in love with something. Um, and you can just, like I said, you can just on to the next thing so fast. So I kind of, I like, I prefer to do like an album because I think it means a lot more to people to be able to put put together a collection of songs, get in the studio, really work on it for six, eight weeks, and, uh, you know, kind of think of it as a full thought. EPs are cool in a way that you can release a couple of songs multiple times a year, but then you get people not taking it seriously because like, I'll just wait to the full length. But you're missing the point. We're releasing three tiny CDs that create a full length. So people don't really look at it that way. They will now. I After hope. This. And now, what is, um, with set lists? You know, I've heard that they're a bit of an art to create, just like the track lists, sort of along the same lines. Can you give us some insight into what goes into creating yours and just, you know? Sure. It is, I would say it's a five member struggle every time. Yeah. Because we all have the songs that we like to play live, we all have the songs that we think people want us to play live. Uh, we have the songs that we think we need to play live. <laughs> so it's, it's a balance. And on a set like Warp Tour, everybody gets a half hour. So we're trying to create, trying to shove five albums and two EPs worth of songs into a half hour. So um, we we very rarely create the perfect set list. So for Warp Tour, we created three set lists and we alternate them every day. So that way, some people will get a song, uh, you know all silence and black and white, some will get all If Only You Were Lonely, some will get a mixture of all the songs, it's like a collection. It's a surprise every time. It is, and it's a surprise to me because I don't have them memorized, so I'm like, which one? C. I don't know which one that one is, so then I still gotta look at it. Keeps you on your toes. It does. What do you want fans um, and aspiring artists to know about the music industry? Uh, I would say that it is harder than you think because it seems like everybody is trying to be in a band. Absolutely. You know, everybody, there's so many people. But you, ha you really have to balance the fact that there are a lot of hobbyists that want to be in a band for fun, and that is great. That's nice and creative, and there's people who want to like nothing more in their life than they want to hop in a van and tour every day of the year if they can. Uh, but you're competing with both of those. So, and people don't care, they just want to hear songs. They don't care if it's a band that 
plays one show a year or if a band that plays 300 shows a year. So the only advice I can really give is to make sure that you like the people in your band because that's the most creative energy that you're going to get is to be playing music with your friends and to be able to hang out with them. That's all you can really do. It's best of both worlds, right? You got it. Having made it as far as you have, at what point did you realize that your actions were having an influence on other people's actions and emotions? I would say when our first album came out, you know, you have people walking up to you saying, you know, your album got me through the hardest time in my life, and it's because of you that I'm here. Anytime you hear anybody say that, uh, it's mind blowing, and it's just, a, it's beautiful. And that's one of the reasons that it can keep you making music, it can keep you creating, is that it helps you inside, but it's also you see how it's touching other people, and it's it's a beautiful thing. What is on your personal bucket list? Personal bucket list. For the band, I would love to play Red Rocks in uh, Colorado. It's just a place surrounded by giant red rocks, and it's supposed to be the best sounding, best, coolest looking venue. Uh, for me, I don't know, I'd like to go to Antarctica or something. So I keep hearing that. I, I'm it's so, tough to get to. I'm just, I'm surprised. It's probably brutal though. You probably get there and you're like, cross Time it off. Time to go home. Gotta go. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, what is one question you'd like to be asked but never have been, and what is the answer? Um, I, love, I would like to talk about sports more, because I get to talk about music all the time. So my favorite sport is football. Okay. My favorite team is the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, yeah, sports. Note for future interviews. If I, I would ask you anything about sports if I knew anything about sports, but I don't. But that's how you learn. But now, yeah, now somebody who does know about sports can ask you. Right, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, thanks for having us. We're going to be on the Warped Tour the rest of the summer, a fun tour in the fall, and we're going to be promoting our new album, Zero, the entire time. Pick it up, listen to it, tell us what you think. Thank you very, very much.